And now, a word from Infirmary Media. Hey dudes and dudettes, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Be Kind and Rewind podcast. A podcast chock full of everything that is nostalgic about the 80s, 90s, and more, where we chat with our favorite celebrities about our nostalgic VHS days. I'm your host, Carlos, and this is my co-host, Dylan. What up, what up? And this episode, we're running the annexation of Puerto Rico as we're joined by the actor we've seen pop up in many of our favorite movies and TV series since the early 90s, like Family Matters, Boy Meets World, Hey Arnold, and most notably, our favorite field goal kicker on the 90s classic, Little Giant. So we welcome Marcus Toji to the podcast. Hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> hey, thank you so much again for taking the time to come on the podcast. Uh, we, once we announce it, you know, on our Twitter, people were blown up. They're excited to hear from you. They're just like, gotta, I got to hear some more about Little Giants. Got to hear about your your work with Patriot. We actually saw oh. some episodes of that. I definitely want to get into that. Oh, great, okay, uh, yeah. I, I actually, we didn't get to see every episode, but we're definitely going to get into it in more detail. So we're excited to get into that. Oh, okay. yeah. Cool. We saw that uh, season two just got renewed. Is that right? Yes, that is right. When are you going to start filming that? Uh, uh, I, I can't... I, I don't know what I can and <laughs> gotcha. can't say. Uh, no worries. Well, it's just, um, yeah, good I don't know. season two it's coming. Like, I don't sign any. Uh, I don't sign any non-disclosure agreements, but I feel like everyone's like, I don't know. Every, everyone has their own thing, like Netflix oh, and Amazon. Yeah. They want they want you to just not say anything if you can. <laughs> you can't, gotta so. be careful, nonetheless. No, you to- totally understand. But from what we saw in season one, we're excited to see what season two has to offer. So when you can, when you do uh, announce it, let us know. We'll definitely spread the word for sure. But um, you know, Amazon, of course, it's a binge worthy type show. Are there any shows that you're yeah. uh, other shows that you're kind of binge watching uh, right now? Um, well, actually, just last night. I finished uh, Vice Principals on HBO. We're big, Definitely we're big love fans. That show. Oh of, yes, uh, Danny oh, yeah. McBride for it sure. Is so good. Yep. I mean, Kenny Powers. I, come on. I'm not a big Danny McBride <laughs> fan, but that show, I just like, I just couldn't stop watching. It's like, he, I don't know. I like, I, I find him like so. He's play, He plays the same. He plays Danny McBride, but it's like, but so like, it, I think the thing about Vice Principals is he cares. <laughs> And that's what makes me want to watch it. It's like, oh, I'm like, oh, if you're a jerk but you care, I I love the show. I'm like, yeah. So we we watched all of it, and and that ending, we were like, oh my god. Yeah, that's how I was too. <laughs> what are they gonna do? I mean, it starts out like you think it's just gonna be this not run of the mill comedy. You know, it's gonna be a special comedy, but, but it takes yeah. that dark turn at the end of the season. You're like, yeah. whoa, yep. I'm gonna see what the next season brought. Yeah. So yeah, we're definitely fans of Vice <laughs> Principles as well. Uh, so yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah, just kind of want to see what uh, what you've been watching. Just like I said, we're gonna get down on the uh, Patriot because it definitely uh, has got our interest at this point in time. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. I like yeah. it a lot. Yeah. So uh, well, man, just to kind of jump into it, just kind of start out from the beginning. Uh, you know, we saw that you've been in Hollywood for for a while. You've been in there since uh, about ninety one was the first gig. Is that the first official gig on IMDb? Yeah. There's there any, any, anything before that? Yeah, I think. You know, it's like uh, sorry, my. My alarm clock. It's, it is sounds going so majestic. And these long, <laughs> long songs. Um, yeah, that was uh, ninety-one. That was one of the early, like, creditable things on IMDb because, like, I did commercials as a kid and stuff, but you know they don't put it on there. Um, so actually, I've been active since eighty-nine. Okay. Well, wow. Um, and is there is there an IMDb and, uh, for commercials? Like, do they not have? The, why do they not credit people with their work in commercials? I don't get it. You know, I th- I think it's because they don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's because you still uh, do commercials, uh, correct? I've seen you in some recent ones yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I I, I don't discriminate. You know, it's uh, I am a working mm-hmm. actor. You know, so I do. You know, I there occasionally are things that I say. You know, that's not for me. But it's it's got to. You know, there's. You know. Nothing's wrong with commercials. Is it normal? Is the decision based on like product base or like perception or like what you've experienced with the product it's, itself? Maybe it's it's more perception, honestly. Like I'm I'm Asian American. I'm not like uh, and you have to go back to my grandparents to go back to uh, Japan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't like you know I, I don't do a lot of like asian accents things like those and you know it's uh you see it you know it, it's nice you see it now like john cho doesn't do it he you know 
gets to play Sulu. I'm like, I'm excited, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's something that I guess it's a luxury for you know for a, a, our generation, um, you know, and generations to come is that there's work if you don't do that. You know, because there was a time where it's like, that's all, that's that's what you do. And, you know, there wasn't an option, but now there is. So I'm grateful. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot more opportunity for Asian actors uh, nowadays. It feels like they're just opening more roles. They have like, um, you know, the TV shows on ABC. Uh-huh. They have, uh, what was it, the oh, Crazy yeah. Rich First, Asians or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. soon. That, that's been getting a lot of hype as well. Like just a lot of, like you said, more opportunity. So it's great that, you know, things are changing in Hollywood. And that kind of leads to what you're talking about, like, you know, what kind of has been changing in Hollywood or whatever. Yeah, well, we were just curious because you started so young. I mean, now you're saying 89, so almost 30 years in the business. Yeah. Um, what have you noticed that's changed in Hollywood in the last 30 years? Um... God, you know, it's uh, it's hard to like talk. It's hard to figure out what's what's changed. I think, I mean, the thing that I've heard about that's changed in the past few years. Like, I think, um, uh, uh, oh, was it Sansa Stark? She talks about it. Is the, you know, um, how many followers you have on social media can can give you a part or not? And like, yeah, oh, okay, that's, that's intense. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, something you gotta think about though. It's it's like a worry. <laughs> <laughs> of mine, yeah. but it's like luckily, I mean, I, you know, I'm a I'm a character actor. I um, I'm a little bit older than the than the people who are being like, you know, judged based on their their Twitter or Instagram followers. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it's not really a, a huge concern of mine, but it's something that I think you know one of these days it may factor in, and I'm like, oh well. I have a couple hundred, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know who uh, has thousands, but, you know. Yeah. And th- no, it's interesting because I've heard that, too, from people that there's just like, yeah, it's really like influencers is like what they call them. Yeah. people who have the most if they can bring more eyes to the movie. That's kind of more the, the idea nowadays as opposed to talent or yeah. experience and things like that. So it's it's got to be jarring to grow up. In, in the part of the business where auditioning and things like that were yeah. a huge part of it. And it still is, I'm assuming, but now this has kind of infiltrated kind of the process. Yeah. Well, I, and as far as a business concern, I think, you know, yeah, producers want, you know, they want to cast people who have followers and things like that. But at a certain point, then influencers can, uh, can weaponize that, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, I, you were doing me a favor by you know by putting me in because I have all these influencers, but at a certain point I can require things from you because I have so many. And that's pretty much like what yeah. The Rock and oh, like yeah. Kevin Hart are doing. Like they're like their own like thing. Like they charge the the studios yeah. to basically do the promotions. And at that point, it'll trickle down to where you know. I mean, thankfully Kim Kardashian doesn't do do too much acting, but. <laughs> You know, if she Fingers wanted crossed. to, yeah, if she wanted to, she could be like, no, you have she to, definitely could. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to, I'm going to charge you for that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And the, all those Kardashians, like the way their their influence, is sad, as sad as it is, the reality, their influence could be, yes, if I want to be in that movie, then yeah, maybe somebody might make the, the, the decision to put them in the movie a little bit longer than they probably should be. Yeah. But thanks to they have like a hundred million followers, yeah, you know, exactly. well, that's, that's uh, more tickets they, they could, they can sell just based off of that. So yeah, it's a sad reality, but I'm glad that there's still like, it hasn't completely taken over no, no. the industry. That that's a good part. Yeah, it ha- it hasn't taken over, so that's pretty good. <laughs> so, would you kind of like would you say any advice on people who are getting an industry now compared to what it was like back in the day? Oh, um honestly, I mean the getting into the industry isn't that hard. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's there's a lot of work that has to go into it, but you know, I've I've known many people come who got out of high school or college and moved to LA to become actors and they didn't do it. And it's, I think people think that getting to the actual physical Los Angeles is the goal. And that is not it. It's it, it, you, when you get here, that doesn't mean you've made it as an actor. That Mm -hmm. means you got to the location of where it happened. So you got to the theme park, but you're not getting on any of the rides yet. Yeah, exactly. And so <laughs> the the easy part is getting to LA. 
But the hard part will be, okay, now you have to put in the work and, you know, and the hard, it it just gets, the hard part just gets harder. It's Mm -hmm. you, you find maybe a good acting class and then you, you know, you, you do, you put in the work for class and you think, oh, great. I'm the big, I'm the big shot of class. And it's like, no, that's not what you want. You need to be, you need to get represented by an agent or a manager. And then you go on some auditions and hopefully you're good and you get a job, right? It'd be a small job. You know, I know they say no small parts and that's true because every job is, uh, is necessary. Like every job can lead to another job. Um, I mean, going to, it's always building experience and everything like that as well. And a reputation and relationships, um, with Patriot, uh, that casting director, I auditioned for, um, uh, keeping up with the Joneses. Um, okay. okay. The movie. Yeah. The movie. And I, yep. I didn't get cast. Um, you know, and I went in there, I'm, I'm, I think I met with the director once and it went well, you know, but didn't get cast. Um, but they liked what I did. And then they were like, well, we were working on this other thing. Come on in for Patriot. I went in. And, there you go. And then it goes that's, in, just, you know? that's the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, actors, we, you know, we can get lazy just like everybody else. And <laughs> you have to, you have to do what you can to fight it because it's easy because you you can get down on yourself or you can get down on the industry and you're like, you know, I deserve better than this. But you still have to put in the good work because it just takes that – it takes the casting director to go. That person always mm-hmm. comes in. They always do a good job. It only takes mm-hmm. one time for them to go, man, that person came in a really – you know, I, I've, I vouched for them and they came in and they embarrassed me. I won't ever call that person back. And they won't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's uh, that's a good way to perceive it because a lot of times you hear a lot of people coming from LA. Like, there's always those uh, those bad apples, the assholes who oh, yeah. build a bad reputation for themselves, and they wonder why a few years down the road nobody wants to work with them. But then, like you said, character actors like yourself, you just continue to work because you know how to build relationships, you know how to you know conduct yourself around the right people and things like that. So it's just like yeah, or for, around everyone. I mean, in general, yeah. but just like be nice to everybody. And, you know, that's just, it works out in the long run, just like you said, with the casting director. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so talking about, like, you know, your first gigs and, uh, um, and other roles, the first one with the, was on the show Drexel's Class. Is that what, <laughs> that's just what the show was? Yeah, that was – oh, God. Uh, I was looking through some VHS tapes that my mom had because she would record the show. Yeah, Drexel's <laughs> nice. Class was like – a Christmas episode, uh, Dabney Coleman, uh, if you guys don't know who that is, uh, he was the, wasn't he in Tootsie? I think he was the director in Tootsie, like of the, mm-hmm. uh, of the soap opera. Okay. And, um, so he's like a teacher and, you know, he's like a gruff New York kind of guy. And so he just, he, for some reason he has to be Santa Claus for these things. So he's going from mall to mall. And I'm just one of the kids. Um, I start naming off toys I want. And he's like, all right, you're done. And then he you know, just throws me aside. Just like Christmas story. Yeah. He's just ready to get you off his lap. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but that was uh, just you just watch it and you're like, oh, that that was me. I, I hope I got better. The show itself has the weirdest premise, like just to kind of read it off. Oh, yeah. it's Otis, Otis Drexel is a corporate raider who's known for getting the deal done. He's then caught red-handed dodging taxes and given a suspended sentence so long as he work at, works as a school teacher at an elementary school until the back taxes are paid. Every week he finds himself <laughs> making an adjustment from going from boardroom to the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's uh did you even see the show before you uh, i don't think so made, <laughs> made like, is that what that was about <laughs> it's one of those you're you're you're, you're in a christmas episode so you yeah. probably have no idea what the entire show is about premise anything you're just there you're there to work yeah you know at that point in time uh well you know that was your first role but you had a ton of other roles you know you had the 90210 another christmas episode <laughs> Oh yeah, another Christmas oh, episode. And jingle all the way. Jingle all the way. Yeah, yeah. we had jingle all the way too. Boy Meets World, Family Matters, Hey Arnold, and just plenty other ones as well. Um, like we just said, were you a fan of these shows before you get got onto them as well? A couple of these. Um yeah, uh, nine hundred two one zero. Like even though I was pretty young, that was just such <laughs> a phenomenon show that yeah, I, I watched the show and and getting on it was kind of was pretty cool because like all those actors were like the 
thing back then. Yeah, you know, like definitely. a lot of these shows are on you're during the peak of their run. Oh, so yeah. like you had great timing yeah. on these on these shows. Um, and Nine Hundred Two and that was a that was a fun one. All you heard about all kinds of like drama with the girls, and I feel like you could feel it on set. You weren't <laughs> the tension really. was thick. <laughs> they weren't like you know hitting each other or anything. It wasn't like a, a cat fight, but all the guys were actually really cool. They were all really nice and like you'd think Luke Perry and them would be kind of maybe off putting, but no, he was just he was just a chill guy. He wasn't like Was his age difference unsettling how much older he actually was than everybody well, was? You know, everybody you know, I was else. so young, they were uh, <laughs> they were already They all adult. looked forty years old yeah. to you, yeah. At yeah. that point. We all all adults looked super old at that point, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then yeah, and jingle all the way too. Put that cookie down now uh rocking out with arnold and uh and sinbad, sinbad. so yeah. you you got to race around the little rc car right yeah. there in the store and it was sinbad who uh, fall, slips on it yeah. so what was that interaction like working with those guys for that one scene so um that was another like interesting one the director of jingle all the way brian levant he uh he did i guess un- i'm not sure if he's i think he's uncredited on little giants um he did some reshoots and, as the director? Yeah, the, the or, director. Uh, and yeah, uh, okay. as director, the, the the director of Little Giants, he had to go edit because, you know, he had all these things in mind. So he went to the editing and then they brought in some director, the, this director to kind of fill in the last uh, the last bits of the, the, the big game. Mm-hmm. And so he directed that bit. And when it came to doing Jingle All the Way, he just I, a lot of the kids from Little Giants were not from L.A., and so I and I and I am from LA, and so he, I don't know what number I was on the list, um, <laughs> who he called, but I got the call, and it was just like, yeah, we need you to be a kid in the in the toy store, and Arnold's gonna steal the RC car from you. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was the middle of summer, so it was really hot. Oh, random. Oh, of course, it's yeah. always usually how it is those winter those uh, Christmas movies. She's like, oh, they look all so cold, but it's like 97 degrees yeah, exactly. at that point. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Arnold was gigantic. Um, he had like a cigar, and most of the time they don't smoke indoors <laughs> with kids of around. Course. But Arnold can do that. So. Arnold can do that. Yeah, he but, could. I mean, this was what like what year was that? Uh, 95, 96 or something. Yeah, of course, another peak Arnold. Another peak situation oh, with yeah, Arnold and oh, yeah, out yeah. Point. Yeah, I think it's like right before Eraser, which, you know, wasn't the downturn. I, I liked Eraser. But he was still at the I, – I, I saw Eraser with my dad in the theaters. Like that was I, – oh, yeah. I, I, It's a guilty pe- pleasure. I love that it's movie. It's your <laughs> luggage. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> See, I, it, it's it's underrated for sure. So, yeah, yeah that's is. awesome you got to work with those. What about Sinbad? Was he just cracking jokes on set the um, whole time? or uh... You know, he all of my stuff, I wasn't – it's like uh, I don't remember working with him. Um, mm-hmm. cause his stuff, I think the stunt, you know, the stunt man's one of the uh, trips and just kind of blocking a little bit different. It's kind of one of those, like the shots are, it's me and Arnold, you know, and then they go off and they film the other direction at some mm-hmm. other point, but they don't need us there. So yeah, understandable, um, but I mean, I, I don't believe I ever heard anything like, you know, he, he seemed like a nice enough guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. No, no. Like I said, the uh, the movie is awesome. Another underrated one, Jingle All the Way. With uh, I mean, Anakin they, Skywalker. It is. Uh, yeah. Good old Annie. Good old Annie. <laughs> oh, poor, kid. Poor, poor kid. Poor um, kid. <laughs> Marcus, do you have uh, do you have any good stories from when you did like Family Matters or Boy Meets World or anything like that on set? Um, let's see. Uh, Boy Meets World was fun because uh, I actually did two episodes, um, and I did them at different points in there in the in the show because oh, okay. one i'm playing like a sixth grader you know they're they're like ninth graders and i'm like a sixth grader and and they like pull a prank on me and the other kids and then i go back years later where i'm playing they're in like their high school academic decathlon and uh we're i'm from another school and i'm like uh uh like we're the nerdy kids Einstein okay. Academy or something. So the yeah. rivals coming in. Huh? Yeah, but it's just like, do they not know that I was on the show before? <laughs> the, ca- the, ca- the canon, the canon has been yeah. mi- mixed up now. Or do I get to make my own little backstory? Like I want revenge on them from there's, the years. There's of... got to be. You got to create a comic book now with, <laughs> yes. with both your characters. You know, they got to have two identities. Yeah, um, but no, they were all they were all great. Um, I think. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it was just it was one of those things like Boy Meets World was just a nice set. You know, everyone, you know, sometimes you'll go places and you'll hear like there's drama between cast members. But, you know, I think something about probably Disney back then was, you know, they they I guess they ran a tight ship. <laughs> so okay. like the kids I got along, mm-hmm. you know, they they had lives. They got along. Uh, same thing with Family Matters. You know, everyone, when they would break, they would all just be like sitting in the in the set for the for the family room and just be like hanging out and talking and laughing. And, you know, you, as the day players, when you just kind of come and go, you're kind of just watching the leads, mm-hmm. you know, just seeing them interact with each other. Um, but they were always really warm, you know. The, uh, that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, you always hear the, the mixed stories, and it's good to hear the ones, the TGIFs, the ones that we love. Yeah, you know, no, you know, was, they hold up. No, I'm I'm pretty lucky in that I can say that most of the people were nice because you do hear bad things. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it you always get your bad apples with it with every group. But yeah, but yeah. So like I said, you you, you had all kinds of awesome uh, roles throughout the '90s and stuff. And then also we saw not too long ago you did a it started a YouTube channel, Mission Six YouTube channel. Oh yeah, that was, it's been a couple of years. Is, is is are we gonna yeah. see any more uploads anytime soon? Probably not. You know, it's <laughs> uh, that was one of those. It was uh, my friends and I. Uh, well, actually, one of my partners, Todd Bosley. He uh, mm-hmm. was also a little giant. Somebody call 911! Um, and, uh, you know, we started a YouTube channel to kind of just, like, do stuff. You know, we were bored, and we wanted to, you know, just film things, film sketches, because we write, you know, and we just wanted to do something, and we sometimes we got a little crazy with uh, what we thought we could do, you know, what we thought we were capable of. Um it's I still look at them fondly, but it's you know it's definitely like, all right, I think we're we're good. We I, you know I've been thinking about you know Todd and I still hang out. He was the best man at my wedding, so oh, <laughs> nice yeah. But uh, we we're always trying to figure out something new. So who's to say? Like I I, I wouldn't mind doing sketch. You know we're 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 pretty fond of like shows that are kind of uh, if you look at like Louis. He, yep. He's not the best person to like emulate right now, but he, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his show would be kind of different from episode to episode, you know, and it felt it is a good like, show. Yeah, like a string of sketches that make a pretty mm-hmm. interesting story, and so it'd be one of those things that you know where uh, it's just I, I just really want to put Todd in odd situations. <laughs> okay. just, I mean, you, you can't go like wrong. I think. Two. Yeah, no, you just can't go wrong with that situation now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, are you going to look to write or, I mean, you know, you say you want to do some more sketching and write or direct anything else or, um, I mean, Todd and I are always kind of writing, you know, just trying to figure something out. And, uh, the good thing is, you know, we do have the, I think we have the talent, we have the resources, you know, like we do know, we do have some friends that produce and things. So it's really like just not wasting people's time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? Coming up it's with like, good content. Exactly, you know, because yeah. if it's good, then people will help you. It, yes. It, but you really only get one chance, so mm-hmm. no use in wasting someone's time with something that's crap, so they have to tell you no. <laughs> no, no, it's understandable. Yeah. Be selective. Like you say, you got to mm-hmm. put out the quality content. Yeah. Well, we'll be on the lookout. Maybe we'll see it. I know it's been a couple of years, but we'll, we'll be on the lookout for some more videos on the uh, Mission 6 YouTube channel. Um, but some other stuff too you you done recently. You're on a Workaholics episode, yeah. the uh, Trivia Pursuits, yeah. uh, as the opposing uh, trivia champions, which yeah. uh, is another awesome, another classic episode from Workaholics. Um, so those guys are pretty known for like, be they're all we're all at the same age, you know, 30, 84. I was born eighty four. Yeah, yeah eighty five. So they're all pretty nostalgic around the same in regards to the same things. And so they brought on other characters before. Is that kind of how it came to you, or is that like a regular audition that you came no, onto the show? Regular audition. Um, but uh, Anders and I had an acting class in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. There you go with and, the classes. Uh, you know, yeah, the, the networking always. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it's you. Yeah, you just kind of like never know who's going to be in a class with you and then you'll run into them in audition and then so so I did just go on a regular audition and then he was like, "Oh, that guy." 
<laughs> I remember him. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that, hopefully that wasn't the one thing that made it through, but hopefully it was like, he's good. Oh, and I know him, you know? <laughs> uh, so, but that was, that was a great, a really great time. Um, you know, like I, I had had some parts, I think earlier that year or something where I was kind of like, like, is this what it is? This is what my, the rest of my acting life will be. And, and that part came along and it was just kind of like, like reinvigorating, you know, it really kind of like how much fun a set could be. Um, and they, it's like, uh, uh Adam Devine plays like such a jerk, but they <laughs> wanted you to play like the other, me and the other three guys, they wanted us to play with them and, you know, improvise on set and kind of just come back to them and, and, it was that's what made it so like welcoming to be there. Um, awesome. Yeah. So those guys, another I've got another good, more good people. <laughs> yeah, like you said, just the the right people, right networking, things like yeah. that. Being nice to everybody always works out yeah. for sure. Uh, and then, so I'm glad that was reinvigorating for you because you know, in 2017, you got into uh, you got the role in the Patriot, like we mm-hmm. talked about earlier. I want to get into a little bit more about that one because, like I sure. said, we're definitely interested. So in 2017, uh, you got the supporting role um and the in patriot and this this premise is pretty interesting so to prevent iran from going nuclear intelligent officer uh, john tavner must forgo all safety nets and assume the perilous non-official cover uh, at a mid-level employee at a midwestern industrial piping firm so interesting premise for it a is. show but it the execution is great i love it yeah. so far uh, and of course, your character Stephen coming into play after, after watching the first few a little bit of the episode, I'm like whoa, is this how? <laughs> is this yeah. It? So it's a, it put, it's a little. I don't want to spoil too much, but I mean, of course, you come back for the rest of the uh, the season, just a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting the the arc that you have uh, throughout this one season. And, I, and when I it, when I saw that it was over, I'm like, they have to have a second season. So I'm glad that they're bringing it back because there's definitely some questions that need to be answered uh, for the show. So what was it like, you know, getting in the process of getting into this show? Um, so like I said, the the casting director of that, they mm-hmm. brought me for something else, didn't get it, but then they brought me in for this. And um, it was it was great. You know, the um, I didn't know... Uh, when I, when I auditioned for it, like it, it's basically my the first scene of the episode or, that I'm in and then the last scene. And so uh-huh. from just reading that, it seems kind of like, it seems funny that he comes back, but it's just, uh, I didn't think the show was going to be as offbeat as it is. You yeah, know? it's yeah. got a good mixture. How they, yeah. they sprinkle in that humor. Yeah. It's, subtle, like... <laughs> it's subtle, but it's mm-hmm. definitely in there. Yeah, and so, you know, we, we filmed it all in Chicago. Um all the like piping stuff that was all in Milwaukee and um but when then we filmed most of it in Chicago uh and uh how long uh, does a like 10 episode show like that take to shoot um let's see we started in I think it was like three months to film 10 episodes that, uh, that's how long it was in Chicago okay. but I think after that all the European stuff they filmed that in uh Prague uh oh, unfortunately I am not in any outdoor European stuff. So I did not get to go to Prague. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, so actually, so let me go back a little bit more. The pilot we filmed, this is part of the Amazon, uh, original series. Uh, I guess the, I guess campaign. Um, so they did the pilot and then they put it up on Amazon and seeing how people reacted, credits reacted, they decided to go to series. So the original, the pilot filmed in Montreal, so okay. all the all the piping stuff and then all the European stuff was all just in Montreal. Um, and then, so when they moved to Chicago, I was like, okay, that makes sense for the for the for the piping stuff, but not quite the European stuff. Um, no, that was that was one of those shows. It was so every episode you read, you just started laughing while reading it, <laughs> and then you'd want you'd want to read the next one. Like I didn't, you wouldn't think that binge watching would. Uh, go the same way while reading okay you know where you're like i need to read the next episode <laughs> um and it did and so one episode i'm i'm not in so i i emailed um some of the other actors <laughs> i'm like can you send me the script like are you allowed to can you send me the script because i need to know what happens it has no bearing on my character whatsoever but i was <laughs> like i need to know i need to know how this goes um 
but yeah, the mystery the mystery is still out there. So that's why we're waiting on season two to see how how it unfolds. So yeah, uh, so yeah, and, and one of the episodes you have the uh, the reenactment of the big chopsticks. Yeah. yeah, that that was awesome. <laughs> out, out of nowhere, this giant keyboard shows up in the yeah. office. So what was how was that like rehearsing? How many takes did it did it go through? All that um, good stuff. So we rehearsed that. I think he. Oh yeah, so we 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 get the script. We get a little uh, about the episode before they even talk about the piano. Uh, Steve Conrad, the creator, kind of told us that, "Hey, you guys are. Did you have you seen Big?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "You know the piano scene?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Do you like it?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it's in there that we're gonna be reenacting the scene. So I started like watching it, and then I was like, I, uh, you know, I I know very small amount of music, so I was able to kind of like figure out how to play it by hand. Mm-hmm, and I was okay. like, okay, so how do you do this with your feet? Um, in high school, I did like musicals and stuff, so it was like, we they hired a choreographer, and they, you know, the piano that you see in there is the piano we rehearsed on. So they set it up in like a conference room, and so we were just, you know, Kurtwood would finish filming for the day. And then they'd send him over to the conference room and there I'd be in a, and be like, okay, so the choreographer now is like teaching us how to play it, what we're doing, how to, you know, where to step and, and how. So, um, and then, you know, she would video it and we would, they'd send it over and they'd be like, great. Or, oh, that looks too good. Bring, bring it down. <laughs> it has to look better at, has to look the best at the end. Um, and then, uh, let's see the, the, when we filmed it, that was they tried to do as few takes as possible because i mean <laughs> kurtwood kurtwood's doing a lot but he's just doing uh just a few steps i'm the one who's like you're, jumping you're around, hopping around. yeah you gotta do most, I'm of, the the, young guy, most so. of the front load yeah yeah but uh no by the by the last one it was like I, it just—I was so tired. <laughs> he was talking about Kurt was talking about putting his foot up people's asses and all that. Call yeah. people dumbasses, just like good old Red. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was a pretty cool that being being able to work with him so much was was pretty awesome because you know I I know him from like uh, from RoboCop. Mm-hmm. And, oh yeah, he's been around yeah. for a while. Yeah, and uh, awesome. you know just and and of course that seventy show and just anything else where he's just intimidating. Um. And uh, one of my favorite scenes was one of the first scenes I filmed with him was uh, he, the the therapist is introducing me to everybody and, and he, and he is talking, he's like, can I talk to him? And he does this, <laughs> like, he's so close and he's, he's so intimidating, but hilarious so, at it. Are you prepared? As he's leaning in to talk to me and I'm like, should I be scared? Can I laugh? I don't know what to do. <laughs> That scene got a good uh, chuckle out of me. That he had to walk yeah. all the way from the corner, back corner, just to come, you know, acknowledge. The yes, ner- yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing that makes the, the the comedy that much better is the nurse, Nurse Allie. Like, yeah, she is. I mean, one of the best yeah. parts of these episodes with you, like you two, like her instructing you, giving people instructions about how to interact with you, like everything. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, Charlotte. That's uh, Charlotte. Oh, I, I keep forgetting. She she was on Degrassi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, she's Canadian, and uh, <laughs> she was so good. And I think no one, I don't think any of us could have expected her part to go that way from the pilot. <laughs> yeah, because it's on and the pilot. Um, it, the character's written where it seems just it's she's the nurse. Maybe she'll be in the next episode. Maybe she won't. You know who knows. And then the next. The next episode, she has this two-page monologue about Steven. And I was like, I hope she knows – I hope she got the script a while ago because this is going to be this is gonna be hard. Yeah, the, the whole announcement in front of the whole office monologue, oh, yeah. is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. And, and she has a monologue and everybody is watching her. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she just knocked it out of the park. No, it yeah. was great. It's for another me, hilarious yeah. part from her. It's just kind of set her character up just right. Oh, like, yeah. oh she's going to have some good rapport back and forth. She's not just going to be, you know, just like no. taking orders from these guys. She's like, oh, she's giving it back to them. And she's funny as hell with it, too. So yeah. it's just a good combination. So, yeah, I'd love to see more of her as well. So can't wait uh, for season two of uh, Patriots on Amazon Prime. For those who, who have the subscription, go ahead and check it out. Definitely season one is worth the, uh, the binge watching. Um, but the last thing we want to get 
get into, Marcus, of course, is the role you've been most known before for uh, Little Giants. For everybody who has dreamed of being somebody, Scanlon. but is still dreaming. Walker. For every person who only wanted that one chance. For the rest of you. But never got it. I'd like to thank you for trying out. Your day has come. Let's kick some butt. You can talk the talk if you walk the walk. Somebody call 911! Warner Brothers and Amblin Entertainment present... Where in the hell do you get off trying to put together another team? Guys like you and... Kids like that. I mean, they can't help it. They're no good. Rick Moranis. Who are you, Vince Lombardi all of a sudden? It's Pee Wee football. Ed O'Neill. Oh, my God. Coach is a vampire. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich? You'll never get anywhere treating your helmet like a lunchbox, son. And a cast of small wonders. Timmy, I'm not sure, but I don't think that goes there. In the story of a gridiron miracle. <laughs> son, if you're going to cheat, win. Block. Get the fear out of your eyes. Let's go. Yeah! Oh! And kick butt. One intimidation? I'll show you intimidation. <laughs> Little Giants. Uh, back in 1994, uh, like you said earlier, directed by Dwayne Dunham, but you know he was uh, he did for about two thirds of the movie, and then they they brought in somebody else because uh, according to uh, IMDb and some other things, due to scheduling, maybe falling behind on scheduling, so they. They were making bringing somebody in who can finish it on time while he did the editing, like you said. Uh, yeah. But but it, the whole, the product turns out great. I mean, it still holds up. Like I said, we just watched it. it. Does. The, the the heartstrings <laughs> were still getting tugged. Yeah. Every everybody somebody uh, had a, a tackle or you know made a big play. So um, for that type of role, what was the the audition price uh, audition process? You said it was like a nationwide like casting call. Yeah. So um, uh, I mean, I'm out of L.A. So they did the LA casting, which is pretty easy for them. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, but they did nationwide uh, in just these, you know, I guess, cattle calls is what they call them, yeah. where they just they have a. <laughs> it, it looks yeah. like probably like a, um, like American Idol, where oh, exactly. it's like a def, def, yeah, bunch analogy. of different versions of yourself, like in different yeah. areas. Yeah, uh, and because uh, I and I, I think when they wrote it. They, I mean, it changed a lot from the first script to the last. Um, I think there was only like a few characters in the first script. It was like Icebox, Zoltek, Newbie, uh, and then maybe, um, uh, well, uh, uh, Junior. Um, okay. Good old Devin Sawa. Yeah. yeah, you gotta get him in yeah. there. <laughs> um, you know, and, and maybe one other. Oh, and uh, Tat. I think those were the only characters, Rad and Tad. so good old Rad, <laughs> yeah, Rad Tad. Um, and so what what happened was they, I auditioned for Zoltek. Oh, um, I was gonna really? say, did you audition for other roles? Did they kind of place yeah. you where they kind of wanted? They thought you best fit. Yeah, and so they they just did a cast, you know, casting all these different kids, and then they brought them out to L.A. and we went to Amblin, where Steven Spielberg has his office and uh schindler's list had just come out and or had just won all the oscars oh yeah and so we're in his office watching hook in the private screening room until they bring you know groups of us out to wait in line to meet him he's surrounded because, by indiana jones memorabilia and stuff like yeah, that yeah exactly pretty much you know so it was kind of amazing to be there and so you're waiting in a line with some of the other kids and me and michael's weiner who plays zoltek we were just there, uh, just hanging out in line, waiting to go meet Spielberg, uh, who it, it was not lost on us who he was at that time. So um, he was that famous. Um, and so we just were we were just messing around, me and him. And I think we were doing something like the, the karate kid kick or something, just, <laughs> just there. Right. And we get up to we get up to Spielberg. He's like, what were you and uh, Michael doing over there? And we're like, oh, we're doing the karate kid kick, you know, and we're just talking, and I think he just wanted to get a sense that we're kids, you know, that we were just playing around, just messing around, not, I mean, even though I am an actor and was an actor, it was like he just wanted to know that it was he wasn't getting a stage child. He wasn't, he was getting someone who could just be a kid. Um, and so me and Michael, we get in there, uh, and we did like, seemed like two months of football training 
in Burbank. Oh, dang. I was going to ask and if you, if they tested your, your kicking skills uh, right off yeah. the bat or not. Actually, they did not. Uh, <laughs> Nothing but glass. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, so we did like two months of uh, football camp and um, – and then we would uh, we would do the football camp, and then we would do um, uh, script. We would read the script, and we'd kind of they'd kind of the writers would be there, and they would do stuff. And so from that point, the script changes a lot. There's a new version of the script like every week, different scenes. I think I was going to be Johnny Venero at one point, so I would have gotten kicked. Oh, and yeah, and, <laughs> so, and your dad, you wouldn't have had a dad basically the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Um, and so, yeah, it was, uh, the parts just kept changing around. Um, and one thing that happened when we were doing that was they, you know, production, the producers came to kind of see the football scenes and they were like, they look too good. <laughs> so because you guys had to downplay the yeah, athletes. They've been in training too much. <laughs> yeah, they've been training us to be, to play football. And so we were doing it right. Um, and so they had to, they had to dumb us down. They're like, okay, you don't go. When we call hike, just count to three, and then you go. Or uh, when I count to th- before hike, you go. And then, you know, just to kind of make us all look a little terrible. Or right. Big breath. You're in big trouble. Oh, cool. Cause football, 80% mental and 40% physical. Sick. Well, that is Oscar-worthy acting because I, yeah. as a kid, I was like, yeah, these guys are terrible. They're, they are not good at it's this like, sport. It's like, how can they be that bad? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's funny. I've heard other instances where people who are, who are athletic just like, they got to seriously downplay this because this is not going to come off right. So, yeah, that's awesome. You guys were too good uh, and they, you had to downplay it. Um, I guess uh, in regards to all the other kids that you were, you know, around uh, on set you guys hang out off set do you like still hang out with anybody other than um, uh i think you said todd um yeah let's see i i see todd uh pretty regular pretty regularly um and uh what's he up to nowadays um he's working um you know he had actually oh wait do you do you have am pm out there it's uh, a gas station um convenience store chain uh, i don't we do think not. so we're in denver i don't think we do yeah it's gotta be oh, west okay. coast uh <laughs> He, it's a regional, I, I think it's probably in different states, but it's a, it's a monster made out of convenience store foods. So he's like hot dog, he's got like hot dog fingers. Um, but Todd is the voice of this giant puppet. Nice. Um, and I'll hear him on the radio out here. <laughs> and he'll be like, Tungus, I'm like, oh, shut up, Todd. Yeah. Uh, Your eyes have bags. Tungus help. Thank you. Tungus digits. You call. Maybe I will. I'm actually so glad you gave this to me because I was feeling so sad. Jeff stopped texting me and I was like, whatever. And then he didn't answer me, so I texted again, which Sarah oh, said you were not uh, supposed to do. Tungus gotta go. Um, but yeah, we. I see Todd pretty regularly. I, I keep up with people online every now and again. Uh, uh, Eddie Durham, he was fast Eddie. He was the one who was like, uh, with the Alka-Seltzer, he's like, what are these for? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And and I saw him a lot back in the day because he was he was from Orange County, so just kind of south of Los Angeles. So we would go out on auditions all at the same time. You know, we, he got a commercial, I got a commercial. You know, uh, who else do I see? It's, it's a lot of people online because, like I said, most people were not from LA. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I think Michael's one. I I don't know. I don't know what most of them are up to. It anymore. probably like wasn't until social media before in like before yeah. anybody either reached out to each other or you know yeah. just happened to just do a quick little search and yeah like you said some sometimes people just you know you you fall out of communication with mm-hmm. people but it's great that you still keep in contact with some of those guys so uh, yeah. that's, that's definitely awesome. Um, so while you're auditioning, did you guys know that Dennis Quaid and Gary Busey were originally casted as the the leads? We did not. Who was Gary Busey going to be? I don't know. They don't. That's <laughs> right? the thing. Which they one? they list it, but they don't give me the value information about yeah. uh, the who was supposed to be who. Gary like, Busey really... would have to be Ed O'Neill's character. He had to be uh, Danny O'Shea, right? That is that's the he, no. Danny I, is uh, Dan, Danny is Rick Moranis. Moranis. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Moranis. Um, um, yeah, I I would hope Dennis Quaid was going to play Danny O'Shea because that would have been. But they're both oh, like. I don't know. Dennis Quaid's kind of a studly guy. Like, he, yeah, he could have been like the when he he's did got it. it all together yeah. ex football star. Yeah, and I guess he did I mean Gary Busey. This, this is after uh, Utah. Give me two. Utah, give me two. 
Oh. Uh, from Point Break. Point so Break. we could get some crazy Gary Busey at that point <laughs> in time. Who knows? Um, yeah, those they were supposedly going to be the original lead character or lead actors. So, um, but of course, we got Rick Moranis and and Ed O'Neill. Uh, Rick Moranis, of course, from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and Ed O'Neill from Mary, uh, uh, Married with Children, which is another yeah. great sitcom. It is um, the one that we should not have been watching. Ex- but exactly. I knew him absolutely from that. That you was know, the we one you stayed up late. Old. You stayed up late when your parents told you to go to bed yeah. to watch that one yeah so what was it like uh, we have a qu- actually have a twitter shout out from everett lee show who actually asked what was ed o'neill and rick moranis like on the set of little giants um rick moranis I, I, it's a sadder story um we don't we didn't really get to hang out with him much mm-hmm. um he was our coach i think at that time he had just lost his wife uh yeah uh and so he was going through some stuff, you know, and he has a family too. So I think it was kind of like he, I, I think it might've been one of those. He took the job to think he could work through it and it was still pretty rough on him. So we didn't really get to see him a lot. Actually his, his double was in most of the scenes where it's like, he's looking at us. And so, it, or the, sorry, the camera sees us and he's talking. So it was his double, a lot of that. And it's pretty good double. It was, wow. I, was sick. Like, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, Ed O'Neill, um, he was really nice. I mean, do you think he, I guess the thing is he's really nice because when you think he's going to be like Al Bundy. Al Bundy! (laughs) B-U-N-D-Y, Al Bundy! Made all city back in 66, four touchdowns. And I'm not talking the whole year. One game. (laughs) <laughs> he uh, ends up being much, much, much nicer than that. He seems so. Um, he seems huge too. How tall is he? He's pretty big. I mean, because yeah. he was—he's much taller than Rick Moranis. Of course, we were nine. Yeah, I don't remember how tall he, he could have been. Could have been five six. I like <laughs> six four for all we know. Yeah, exactly. Probably but, five six. He was—he was a really—he was fun. He was a nice guy because we we got to, um, you know, because in the big game scenes, he was—he was there a lot. And so, you know, we got to meet him. He talked to us and, you know, hung out. So in a way, he was more like part of the part of the, uh, the kids group than than Rick Moranis. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, looking back on it, you're like, yeah, he, Rick Moranis is going through some a tough time and you can't blame him. Yeah, it's you know? understandable. Totally yeah. understandable. So did you guys, uh, the teams ever actually scrimmage to see who would actually beat each other in real life? The <laughs> Cowboys or the Giants? Any any scrimmages we oh. don't know about? Uh, I'll have to share the story. Um, because Todd told it at my wedding. Um, <laughs> he, so uh, uh, we were playing a soccer game off you know when when we weren't doing uh when we weren't filming i think it was a rap party but it was the rap party because it was already scheduled we weren't done filming um and so i was captain of one team and i forgot who was captain of the other team so we're you know saying who's gonna play what and i made todd goalie (laughs) um right and he goes out to stop a ball it hits his hand and it breaks his arm oh yeah, so if you watch the movie, you'll see his sleeve length short get short and long from cut to cut because it gets long to hide his cast. Oh man. Uh, so what was yeah. the immediate reactions from the adults on set like uh uh why were these kids playing soccer? <laughs> um well, at least my, he sacrificed my, my his defense, body too. Yeah, in my defense, if I had put him on the field, he would have broken his leg. That's, that's how I look at it. There you so. go. You just saved you saved him and to some degree. Which yes. uh, yeah, no, it's interesting. Any, any other interesting stories like that? Um we all wanted the go-kart. Uh they they raffled oh. that off. Oh, we yeah. all wanted that so bad and the person who won it was Alexa Vega, who was the Ed O'Neill's youngest daughter. She uh, the, the cheerleader like, or the little cheer- girl? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the little girl. Uh. She won it. And everyone was like, seriously? Yeah. yeah. The go-kart goes to the five-year-old? The, right. I, the Icebox go-kart got, got, went to her? Yep. Man. Ah, man. Uh, what about like the uh, – was it the jerseys? Uh, anybody get to keep any of their jerseys? We all kept our jerseys. Nice. Do you still have yours? Uh, yep. It's at my mom's house somewhere. Um, Eddie Durham, he, uh, he just sh- shared on Facebook that his mom uh, – framed one framed the jersey and put the helmet in a 
in a the one of those boxes. I was just saying, so, I put it in the 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 frame, the uh, the box, yeah. the frames for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I think Todd has his framed back home. Back, you know, his parents have it. Framed. There's got to be a little Giants Hall of Fame. You got to have lights <laughs> over them, like going right next to each other, all that good yeah, stuff. Like, well, We'll save them for the sequel. Um. There, you <laughs> there you go. Well, awesome, man. Well, one last question before we mm-hmm. go. Do you prefer crunchy or puff Cheetos? Crunchy. There you go. He's not. This guy's not a wimp. No question. No wimp. We don't <laughs> got wimps on this wimp. podcast. So, well, well, Marcus, that was everything we, we want to go over, man. We really appreciate you uh, coming on the podcast tonight, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, really no appreciate problem. it. It was an excellent interview. Yes, yes. Good Thank stories. you. stories. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's going to love hearing these stories about, you know, Little Giants and, and Patriot. Like like I said, go back. I, I know I've said it multiple times. People, go watch Patriot on Amazon, please. It's a great it's a great show. So, but where, uh, where can people follow you online so they can, on social media, so they can see what your upcoming projects are, are coming up? Yeah, um, I am uh, the Toji on Instagram. Uh, so, T-H-E-T-O-J-I. Um, or I'm... Uh, I have a boring Twitter handle. I think this is just M Toji. Keep it simple. It works. That is simple. You got to go with what's available, basically, yeah. at that point. Yeah, I mean Toji's pretty. There's not like a this. You know, you have to come up with a new name. You're this not paying somebody taken. to get your your handle or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, well, the one thing I I just it just came up today, so I I, uh, I guess you guys haven't you guys didn't get to see it was um uh, uh I did a show an episode of um a new a Netflix show called uh, Maniac with Emma Stone and Jonah Hill. Okay. And so nice. they just uh, they just released a trailer for that. And uh, Oh, I think I did I, see that. You're peeking you're a little peeking out I'm, there in the background. I am so. technically <laughs> in the trailer even though I'm not you know, You're there. Not, you're in it. But, yeah. Well, um, nice. Oh, actually it's for Instagram it's the underscore Toji. So it's Cool. And when does that when does that episode come out? Um, well, I think the the whole series drops on September twenty first. I think that's what uh, Netflix says. Cool. cool. And what, but, what's uh, a little uh, synopsis of the show, if you don't mind, for everyone? Um, yeah, Maniac. Uh, it's one of those things like it. It's hard to describe because you look at it, and you're like, <laughs> I have no idea what this is about. Um, th- uh, Jonah Hill and Emma Stone play two people who uh, want to join a drug trial. Um, but it ends up being something much larger than just a pharmaceutical drug trial. It looks pretty trippy and crazy. Okay. Um, nice. But uh, the director of um, the first season of True Detective, so uh, Carrie Fukunaga. Oh, well, there you yeah. go. Like you said, emphasis yeah. on the first season. Yeah, the first, first season is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, man. We well, can't wait to see that. So when that gets released, we'll get some uh, get some messages out to people. We'll check that out as well. So again, Marcus, thanks for uh, coming on the podcast. Uh, everyone else, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Be Kind and Rewind podcast. Make sure you tune in every Throwback Thursdays for new episodes of the podcast. Subscribe, like, follow, and rate the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, YouTube, and Infirmary Media uh, Podcast Network. Also, follow the podcast on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Be Kind Rewind Pod for all of your nostalgic needs. So, thanks and be excellent to each other. And now, a word from Infirmary Media.